Oracle knows our customers are looking for a cloud that offers the enterprise advantage without excessive cost. So we built the next generation cloud to meet the demands of our customers. How did we do this? By eliminating the costly learning curve of other first generation cloud providers. Oracle's Gen 2 cloud infrastructure delivers the best price performance available in the market today offering low, consistent pricing across all regions and services. Oracle Cloud works to eliminate oversubscribed network resources, delivering unmatched performance and consistency across enterprise, cloud native, and HPC workloads at prices unmatched by competitors. With this high performance at market-leading prices, customers experience a faster cloud for mission-critical workloads. And only Oracle offers universal credits that allow customers access to all OCI services. With universal credits, customers can switch services or adopt new ones without having to notify Oracle. And our bring your own license advantages extend the value of existing on-premise licenses to move to the cloud. Oracle's standard Intel-based virtual machine pricing runs 50% less than competitors. And our AMD-based instances are one third the price of major competitors. When it comes to bare metal instances, Oracle is 45% less expensive than equivalent offerings from other cloud vendors. Exclusive to Oracle Cloud are Autonomous Database and Autonomous Linux, which bring automated patching with zero downtime, improved security, and lower administration costs. Oracle consistently outperforms other cloud providers with compute instances that have two to five times higher performance. Take us for a test drive and experience the superior economics of Oracle Cloud infrastructure today. Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Ashish Mohindru. I'm uh, Vice President for Product Marketing for Oracle Cloud. And today we'll be talking about how do you migrate and improve your application, Oracle applications to Oracle Cloud infrastructure. When we first architected our Oracle Cloud infrastructure, we based it on two principles. Uh, one was that we have to be able to run new cloud native applications. And the second was you have to also be able to run all your existing on-premises workloads, and especially enterprise applications that you're running on your own data centers in Oracle Cloud. Now, in order to do that, we built this on five foundations. One was it has to be very secure, just like your enterprise applications, running within your data center are secure, we wanted to make sure we are able to provide you security at every layer of the cloud versus it being bolted on. The second thing was it had to be really high performance. Uh, we wanted to make sure at minimum you were getting the performance you're uh, achieving within your own data centers, but ideally significantly better than what you get today. The third was we wanted to build in more automation into our cloud so that you don't have to worry about mundane tasks. So we eliminate errors. A uh, lot of the issues in the cloud today occur due to human errors. We want to make sure we were able to eliminate all of that and deliver you services which are self-driving, self-repairing, self-securing. Things like what we deliver with Oracle Autonomous Database and Oracle Autonomous Linux. Fourth was with all these capabilities, we wanted to make sure that you were getting the best economics of running your workloads, your applications, in Oracle Cloud. Oracle wanted to make sure you had the lowest total cost of ownership, not only compared to your on-premises environments, but also compared to other third-party cloud providers like AWS or Azure. And the fifth and the final point is about open eco ecosystem. We understand that you don't just run your Oracle applications in a silo. You connect these applications with third-party uh, products or applications. You build customizations on top of that. So you wanted to make sure you had choice on how you did this and also the tools and technologies that you wanted to use to accomplish those tasks. So with Oracle, we wanted to build an open environment where you can bring in your own tools, leverage any open source technologies out there along with Oracle products. The net result of all of this is that Oracle today in terms of performance is performs much better than any of our other cloud providers, including AWS. And in general, compared to AWS, we are two to five X faster. And finally, Oracle also is the only vendor in the market, cloud provider in the market that guarantees uh, perform SLAs across performance, management, and availability. 
Oracle is also consistently less expensive than AWS and other cloud providers across a wide range of cloud services. So if you look at just outbound network bandwidth or data egress, with Oracle, you get about 74% savings. It's a huge cost for most of the customers that are building applications in the cloud or transitioning to the cloud to run the existing workloads. Second, it's actually 2x better in terms of price performance uh, compared to AWS for general memory compute. We also deliver 44% lower cost for running high performance computing workloads while giving the same performance as you experience on premises. And fourth, in terms of storage, we give you 20x the IOPS compared to AWS at half the cost. Now this, just don't take my word for it. Uh, the, if you look at the recent analyst reports from Gartner and IDC, Gartner did a recent evaluation and a scorecard on IAS cloud providers, ranking up all vendors from Oracle, AWS, Azure, and so on. And Oracle was the vendor in terms of the biggest improvement across all these uh, cloud service categories. And if you look at the customer satisfaction survey that IDC recently did, Oracle had the highest score beating out all other cloud providers, including AWS and Azure. Now, over the last few years, Oracle has been, uh, we've at Oracle have been investing heavily in building out our cloud regions to deliver services to you wherever you may reside across the globe. And today we are at 26 cloud regions worldwide, more than AWS. And also we are planning another 10 over the course of the next year to add on to this to the total of 36 cloud regions worldwide. In terms of Oracle applications, we have done a significant amount of work to certify majority of our applications from eBusiness Suite, JD Edwards, PeopleSoft, Siebel, and additional industry apps on Oracle Cloud infrastructure. So these applications, you can be rest assured, run seamlessly on top of our Oracle Cloud infrastructure. And in terms of the value to you, because they're certified, we're able to deliver 45% lower total cost of ownership compared to on-premises. And if you're thinking about moving these applications to another cloud, we deliver 63% lower total cost ownership compared to AWS. And the way we are able to do that is by delivering you better tooling. So we have a set of tools that enables you not only to migrate these applications over to Oracle Cloud infrastructure, but also to manage them while they're running on top of our OCI. As I mentioned earlier, we've already certified these applications uh, on OCI, including our database stack. So our a lot of these applications are now certified to run on top of Oracle Autonomous Database. And what we have is also provided you with validated solution architecture guides and certified solution blueprints that you can use to actually run your uh, workloads with these. And finally, since all of these layers from infrastructure, database to applications are all provided by a single vendor with, like Oracle, we're able to deliver much better quality of support at a much lower price to you. One of the cu customers or companies that benefited from this is IAC. IAC is a, uh, it's a conglomerate which runs about 150 global brands. It's a parent company of about 150 global brands. And they moved their e-business suite application from on-premises to Oracle Cloud. And in the process, they were able to generate 35% better performance uh, on or Oracle Cloud infrastructure compared to the on-premises environment. So let's go ahead and hear from them. IAC is a company that has over 150 different internet products and brands. It's multiple different companies like Vimeo, Match, Angie's Home Services, and we're constantly evolving, mainly through mergers and acquisitions. We have about 22 different third-party companies that we need to interact with. We've been on OCI now for a few months, and we've found a world of difference compared to the old hosted environment. Our customers, our accounting and finance teams are thrilled. Our Oracle EBS performance is about 35% more, and we find that our S-based calculations run 50% faster on the new infrastructure. I've worked with Oracle Advanced Customer Service Group for a very long time now. We did not have any delays. We managed to do everything on time, on budget. IAC is always at the forefront of technology. And these days, technological changes are happening very fast. 
So the move from the hosted environment to the OCI environment is our first step. And we are hoping from here we can move to the SaaS and PaaS environments. Oracle Advanced Customer Service Team has been very supportive of us right from the beginning. So if we have to move from OCI to SaaS, for example, we would definitely be looking up to them to tell us, okay, this is what we need to do and this would be the process that we would do it. Another customer that actually moved these applications to Oracle Cloud is Care. Care is a nonprofit, and they wanted to move PeopleSoft from their on-premises environment to Oracle Cloud infrastructure. And by doing that, they were able to reduce their overall global finance costs by 65%. Now let's go ahead and hear from Care about their journey. With some of India's high maternal mortality and infant mortality, people had actually lost hope that Bihar would ever be able to transform itself. When you see the face of a mother who's delivered a healthy baby, you can't help but feel hopeful. And today Bihar is a shining example of if you have the commitment, the will, and the right tools to create the impact, anything is possible. So with the support of Oracle Cloud Infrastructure and with the government of Bihar, Care is accelerating organizational change, transforming societies at large, helping millions of people and even saving lives. That humanitarian mission is something that we continue to do. But over the years, we have shifted a lot of our work towards long-term sustainable socioeconomic development. So we chose Oracle Cloud Infrastructure because it's really designed to facilitate the management of PeopleSoft financials. We have been able to speed up our batch processes, which means that in emergency settings, we can really stay ahead of the curve in terms of our implementations. On the savings side, we have been able to actually reduce our global finance function cost by 35%. Over the last five years, our audit fees have come down 65%. So we're making financial commitments. We don't have to wait for 24 hours for processes to run. They run every 30 minutes. I think what our partnership with Oracle around PeopleSoft and cloud has given us is that we know the infrastructure isn't gonna fail. We work around the world to save lives, to defeat poverty, and to achieve social justice. Now, everything you saw today so far, you know, uh, that you saw from our customers and how what the, their journey of moving to the cloud, you can actually try it by yourself by simply signing up for a free trial of Oracle Cloud. All these uh, services are available for you for free for up to 3,500 hours. Simply go to oracle.com slash cloud. Next, uh, we are very lucky to have three of our customers join us live today. Uh, we'll hear from them directly about their challenges and the journey to the cloud. Hi, I'm Gary Miller, Senior Vice President and General Manager of Oracle's Advanced Customer Services, which supports the mission critical environments for 6,000 customers globally across on-premise, Oracle Cloud and hybrid ecosystems. Thanks for everyone for joining today. Today, you have the opportunity to learn about the advantages of Oracle Cloud and Oracle services and hear directly from customers. We have a great lineup. Learn from your peers and hear about their successful journey to Oracle Cloud and the benefits they've gained by moving and improving their workloads on Oracle Cloud infrastructure. Before we jump to our customers, I wanted to share what we are hearing more broadly um, as common customer themes. First, business agility and speed. COVID is driving customers to work remotely where possible and shift to more to online business. Digital transformation for many customers has been accelerated and getting to the cloud is even more relevant than ever. This drives the need to innovate faster and bounce forward to new data enabled business models. For example, replacing paper menus in restaurants with Q reader menus accessed by your mobile device. Using data more effectively requires standardization and simplification of processes, policies, and systems. Many enterprises have shifted their business models to offer online experiences in addition to in-store experience, and we created new revenue streams using data insights. As an example, in Europe, 
we've seen a large grocery chain in Spain shift to 80% of their business online um, from in-store. And this has enabled them to expand their market beyond Spain to other countries in Europe. Many customers are having their cash flow negatively impacted. This requires cost reductions while using any available funds for agility spend to meet their critical needs. Keeping the existing systems running, sometimes under higher workloads, is also critical. Every customer I talk to is hybrid, and a majority are multi-cloud. That brings complexity around security, integrations, and manageability. Cybersecurity attacks are unfortunately up 300%. Finally, the battle for talent is even tougher. The traditional location factors have disappeared with most IT professionals available remotely. So in summary, we were hearing, I never want to worry about my data center again. I need to focus on my business, not infrastructure. I need cost savings now, and I need to invest to adapt to the new normal. I need to protect the investment in my existing systems and do even more. And finally, I need to quickly take advantage of modern analytics and SaaS innovations. So how are people achieving this? Move, modernize, innovate. We see customers go through three phases and you're gonna see that later. First, move their Oracle applications and data to the OCI cloud. OCI is optimized for Oracle applications and databases. Oracle has a set of services to educate customers and then quickly architect and move to OCI. Second is modernizing. OCI provides high performance, availability, security, and expandability. Oracle services can help support and secure your applications and data, and then help you use modern analytics cloud and autonomous database. Third is innovation, and that continues indefinitely. OCI's cloud native technologies enable effective development and evolution to SaaS. Over the past 12 months, Oracle Services has helped over 200 of our largest enterprise customers to move their Oracle workloads from legacy data centers to OCI. And, and many of these customers have seen huge uh, performance improvements, anything from 20 to 300%. Oracle Services can share many best practices on how to quickly consume the innovation. This is all underpinned by many service innovations on OCI related to security, supportability, and manageability. We see many customer cloud use cases. For example, disaster recovery on OCI. We had a customer with 36 exadatas on premise, and we were able to help them um, uh, provision their disaster recovery on OCI, which was much less expensive than replicating all of the exadatas on prem. You are now going to hear from Interactive Corporation, Intermountain Healthcare, and Arcor on their use cases and how they have achieved their benefits. Specifically from Paul Scribano, Sean Davis, and Santiago Adrera. Thank you all for taking the time to share your experiences with your peers. Let's start with Interactive Corporation and Paul Scribano. Paul, welcome and thank you for sharing your experiences with the customers attending this summit. Can you tell us a bit about yourself and Interactive Corporation? Thanks, Gary, for the invite. IEC builds companies who are guided by curiosity, a questioning of the status quo, and a desire to invent or acquire new products and brands, large and small. From the single seed that started as IEC over two decades ago, I've merged 10 public companies, a generation of exceptional leaders. We will always evolve, but our basic principle of financially disciplined opportunism will never change. IEC today operates Vimeo, DotDash, Care.com, among many others, and has also majority ownership of Angie Home Services, which includes Home Advisor, Angie's List, and Handy. The company's headquartered in New York City and has business operations and satellite offices worldwide. Thank you for that, Paul, and thank you for the video as well. Um, mergers and acquisitions are a big part of your business, obviously. Um, how has moving to the cloud helped you with that? Yes, mergers, acquisitions, as well as divestures. There always needs to be an exit strategy, which includes financial application infrastructure. Moving to OCI 
allows us to split front office versus back office activities. My team needs to be focused on front office core competency activities, such as acquisition and divestiture activities, as well as assisting organic growth across all of our businesses globally. OCI handles all our back office activities, such as product, maintenance, hosting, and disaster recovery, freeing up an immense amount of time of my, my, my team's time. Okay, that sounds great. Again, um, what, before you move, what were some of your concerns when considering moving your eBiz and Hyperion applications to the Oracle Cloud? Transition of control was the primary concern for the application system administrators. Post-migration, the administrators shifted some of their activities from a support to managed activities, which was exactly the intended outcome of the outsourced cloud model. Financially, the cost also shifted from a CapEx to an OpEx categorization, which was also preferred. Once in the cloud, what improvements did you see? You know, business processing, month-end closing, et cetera. Um, as mentioned, moving to the cloud freed up a substantial amount of time for my team to focus on organic business growth, utilizing product application functionality. A material example of this was to address the uh, ASC 606 revenue recognition rules where we implemented deferred revenue, uh, deferred revenue modeling within the AR subledger model, eliminating the need for third-party products. The functionality was also duplicated in a Six Sigma faction across several revenue product streams and businesses. This was a very efficient and cost-effective method. Additionally, we received feedback from our various accounting teams that the subledger close process has been reduced to minutes rather than hours. The value of an hour during a closed process is far more valuable than outside of a closed process. Okay, that's good. That's good to hear. Um, are you using other Oracle products in the cloud? And what, what do you see your next steps for your cloud strategy, Paul? Uh, yes, we're launching OAC in a matter of weeks. This will replace BIX. Our Angie's domestic operations is currently utilizing NetSuite. Looking forward, we'll continue to expand our global footprint, most likely via acquisitions and divest others, creating independent big box brand names and customers to Oracle and others. Paul, cool. thank you for sharing. Just amazing innovation engine you have there at Interactive Corporation. And uh, we wish you every success with your m &A activities. Thank you. Thank you. Let's move to Sean. Uh, welcome, Sean, uh, with Intermountain Healthcare. Can you tell us a bit more about yourself and Intermountain Healthcare. Hi, Gary. Thanks for the invitation to participate today. Um, so I'm Sean Davis. I'm the Assistant Vice President of Business Applications at Intermountain Healthcare. Um, I lead the team that has responsibility for the technology that supports uh, finance, supply chain, HR, and payroll. And I've been with Intermountain for the last 18 years. A little bit about Intermountain. We're an integrated healthcare system based in Utah. We're 24 hospitals. We have a medical group uh, that has 160 clinics. We employ uh, over 2,400 physicians and advanced practice clinicians. We have a health plan called Select Health, and we employ about 40,000 caregivers whose mission it is uh, to help people live the healthiest lives possible. Sounds you know, amazing uh, setup you have there. Um, obvious question, how has COVID impacted your business and has being on the Oracle Cloud helped you during this time? Yeah, I mean, as a, as a healthcare organization, we experienced some of the same impacts that other healthcare systems have experienced since March. Uh, and, and obviously, we still continue to experience and learn new things and as we've had to quickly pivot to address the needs of COVID and to keep our communities and our caregivers and our patients safe. Um, some of the things that, that, that have impacted us that I would highlight are, you know, in March, we had to defer elective procedures. Um, we had to redeploy thousands of caregivers to other roles, many of which were supporting COVID. Um, we've, you know, had to quickly pivot a, a lot of our um, uh, delivery model to providing online health care. And that was supported by past investments that we had made in um, online health care on our Connect Care platform so people can receive 24-7 online health care on their phone, on their computer, on their tablets. Uh, we also, like, like most organizations, had to transition a lot of people to work from home. And so we had about 10,000 people that are now working from home. Um, but, but I was glad that we had transitioned to uh, OCI um, before COVID and are running you know, the latest version of PeopleSoft Finance and Supply Chain. 
Um, a little bit about how OCI has benefited us since we made that transition. Um, we put an increased focus on supply chain technology to make sure it was performing well and it was highly available. Uh, we put a lot of focus on our supply chain processes to make sure that our patients and caregivers had the supplies they need to keep um, to meet the needs of COVID. Um, during, during COVID and being on OCI, we implemented a lot of automated monitoring uh, so that we could get in front of problems before they occur and that they could automatically be resolved before they became an issue in production. So that, that was very helpful. Um, being on OCI, we're seeing increased performance, so our end users are, are seeing better uh, performance when they're transacting in the system. And we're also seeing uh, improved reporting. Uh, one other thing I would highlight is we've also um, been able to quickly scale our solution. We have recently acquired a new organization, and uh, just last month we were able to bring them on to our PeopleSoft systems. Uh, and the system was able to scale and support that addition uh, really easily. So overall, I, I say I was, I'm glad that we had made the transition uh, to OCI before COVID. Um, the, it's able to handle our workload, it's been able to scale, and it's got a, a much larger team supporting us on infrastructure and on the applications. Okay. It sounds like you and the whole team have been very busy showed in this period and uh, done a great job adapting uh, uh, on that. Uh, maybe you could give a comment on your transition because I know you went through you know, a unique process where it wasn't just a, a move, but you did some, uh, some upgrades at the same time. Yeah, so just for a little background, um, we implemented 18 people saw finance and supply chain modules, the SOA suite and OBIEE starting in 2012. And we did that with Oracle Managed Cloud Services in a private cloud in the Austin Data Center. Uh, so we had uh, eight years of experience implementing, upgrading, and the daily run and maintain uh, with Oracle. Um, we began in about 2018 discussing some of the benefits of being on OCI um, and, and decided it was a project we wanted to take on in 2019. Um, we also needed to do a PeopleSoft and PeopleTools upgrade and wanted to see if we can combine those three projects together and Oracle was, was supportive of us in that desire to combine the projects. And so we started the project in about May of last year. Um, I would say it was a very formal, very structured, very planned process. Um, we set the goal of trying to accomplish it all in about six months from beginning to end. And um, also set a goal of trying to achieve it within our normal monthly uh, maintenance windows, which was a very aggressive goal. Uh, we were assigned a very experienced project manager who we'd worked with in the past. Um, our service delivery manager, our current Oracle Managed Cloud Services team, our, um, and um, our Oracle Functional Services team, product support, um, and our uh, senior ACS management team that we work with were also very involved throughout the six month engagement. Uh, we performed three separate dry runs just to test uh, the timing that we can pull it off in our normal um, maintenance window. Um, and that we could resolve any you know, issues um, before we moved it into production. So that was very helpful. Um, and then we felt ready to go um, and cut over last November and um, did it within our project timeline and did it within our normal maintenance window. Um, we had about uh, two to three weeks of normal stabilization where we made some minor adjustments to the software. Um, uh, but overall, I would say Oracle was a good partner to allow us to combine our projects together into one. And um, we were able to do it on time and we were able to do it on our maintenance window and we did not experience any major issues. Yeah, congratulations, Sean. I think it just shows, you know, for these projects to go well, the, you know, you as a customer need to put the effort into all the planning and testing and, you know, working with all the different parties. So congratulations on that smooth transition and upgrade at the same time. Um, one last question. Now you're on Oracle Cloud. What's next for Intermountain Healthcare? Yeah, so now that we're on OCI, we're starting to look uh, at other opportunities. Um, we're currently implementing monitoring for applications unlimited, so we're looking forward to the benefits that we'll receive there. Um, we're also um, starting to work on a database upgrade, and um, we're ready to move on to the next uh, image for PeopleSoft and the next upgrade for PeopleTools. And then um, now that we're on OCI, we're starting to look at some of the other service offerings that we can take advantage of, like Oracle Integration Cloud and some of the other AI tool offerings. Thank you, Sean. Uh, a very inspiring story of how you uh, reacted and adapted to the pandemic and relied on Oracle to support you. Thank you for the great work that Intermountain Health is doing to keep us well and safe. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Uh, finally, Santiago uh, with Arcor. Welcome. Uh, can you tell us a bit about yourself and Arcor, Santiago? 
Hi, Gary. At first, thank you very much for your invitation. It's a pleasure for me to, to be here. Arcor is a leading multinational group made up of three business divisions, consumer food products, where we, we produce food, chocolates, cookies, confectionery, ice cream, and functional products. And the other LOBs are agribusiness and packaging. We have commercial offices in the Americas, Europe, Asia, reaching over 100 countries and more than 1 million sales points. We have 45 uh, industrial plants in Latin America. We are uh, the Argentine's little, leading food company and paper producer, an important player in Latin America. And we are the first global manufacturer, manufacturer of hard candies. We are a leading company of cookies, biscuits, and, and cereal in the region. We have more than 20,000 collaborators, of which 12K are IT users. Regarding myself, I've been working for Arcor for 10 years now. At first, focus on infrastructure and, and leading the migration of the Arcor on-prem workload to different stages of, of the cloud. First, to a private cloud in Austin data center, uh, within Oracle Labs in data center. Late, later, we moved to Gen 1. And last year, we've done the migration to Gen 2 of OCI. Since last year, I'm also responsible of the IT service organization, where we turn every business need into an IT initiative and trying to align the IT strategy to the business strategy. Okay. All right, Santiago, that's a, a great overview there. So I think you're the company that went fastest from a private cloud to Gen 1 to Gen 2. I think you did, and you have a very complex environment. So how has being on Gen 2 uh, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure helped you grow and operate at scale to become a global, uh, a global operator? Well, a lot of globalization came along with acquisition and partnerships with our companies and standing out for our sustainable practices and our, and our ability to enter new businesses. So IT strategy towards this was to be flexible, uh, agile and global, and allowing an efficient response on time and at, at the lowest possible cost to the requirements of the business. In Arcor, we understand that IT can improve uh, business per performance and increase enterprise differentiation and competitiveness. Uh, to face it, these challenges, we put uh, in place a transformation program that included business processes and applications based on a cloud service. And in summary, we, we looked to, uh, after simplifying our operations and focusing our resources in core, in core activities. OCI then provided us more and better services along with economic benefits for the company. It gave us from the uh, infrastructure perspective, the flexibility and agility uh, we were looking for in order to support uh, in time what our business demand. I, I, I know when we met before, you were very anxious to get on Gen 2 OCI. So what improvements have you experienced uh, since you are on OCI? Well, uh, besides the agility and flexibility, we, we, we improved the stability and the perf performance of, of, of our instances. We increased the reliability of the applications to transfer that confidence to the business. Of course, we decreased our TCO and, and converted fixed costs into variables. And we, we are not able, able to replicate our business models to new businesses. Uh, it's important also to remark that the migration uh, to OCI was a smooth project uh, and, and no one should be afraid of giving this first step. Um, this took us about uh, nine months to migrate around uh, 200 VMs, 12, 12 apps, 60, 60 terabytes of data, 1,700 of integration processes, uh, and I'll, we have come a lot with a lot of support on your side. And since day one of the go live operations were running smooth and normally. You, you have a very large application footprint, Santiago. Uh, what, are, what are the benefits you are seeing having Oracle services you know, manage those applications for you on OCI? Okay, so in the past, in order to, to be flexible and agile, we understand that we need to simplify the operation. And we, we have done a big effort in standardize uh, our, our operation model for all the group. Uh, 
In that time, several uh, Oracle applications appear in our uh, horizon, you know? So uh, we understand that uh, ACS was the natural solution for, for the appearance of this new footprint, allowing us not to have a big growth on, in, in our structure. We need the right people to, to, to manage our uh, Oracle environment, and we understand that no one better than Oracle to do so. And furthermore, uh, having someone to manage the complete stack from the infra to the application, uh, of course, prior to the appearances of some such models, was not a normal offering when we decided to move to, to the cloud uh, along with uh, ACS Managed Service. And also, this helped us to relocate uh, our resources to more strategic tasks, uh, contributing with their knowledge of the business. Thank you for uh, explaining that, Santiago. So, you know, we partnered very closely over, you know, several years with you and your cloud mm -hmm. transformation strategy. What's next for Arcor on Oracle Cloud? Well, when we started this journey, uh, along with uh, Oracle as, as partner, we, we, we both devised a three, uh, three-stage plan in order to keep uh, taking advantage of, on the cloud offerings. We first move our work, uh, workload uh, as if to ES instances. Then we start adding, uh, adding some pass offerings and, and a, a little of the SaaS offering. Mm -hmm. And now we plan to advance further in that sense, seeking new SaaS offerings to migrate some on-prem applications, such as PeopleSoft to HCM or the Mantra to Planning Central. Uh, and again, uh, we, we are also planning to applying some EAI services or machine learning for our, our forecasting and planning, and also following the, the digital transformation of our company, we are developing new digital commerce channels. And from an infrastructure perspective, we are implementing a Kubernetes cluster based on OKE services, and we are start to developing some cloud-based applications. Santiago, thank you for the detailed ex explanation. I think you're a, a perfect uh, example of move, improve, innovate. You know, I think you, you're following that kind of phased approach, which is, uh, makes a lot of sense. Um, we hope th uh, this information will be helpful to your peers attending the summit. Um, also, I want to thank Arcor for finding innovative ways for feeding all of us. As you know, I'm a big fan of your chocolates, so I look forward to meeting you in person soon. So uh, thank you, Santiago. Thank you, Gary. Anytime. So you, you've heard from three very different companies, all innovative in their own ways, uh, all trusting Oracle to provide a secure, highly performant, adaptable cloud, um, along with a partnership to ensure their success. So they chose and trusted Oracle on Oracle Cloud, managed by Oracle. Uh, and uh, I think we're, we're very grateful to be partners with Paul, Sean, and Santiago. So thank you very much. Paul, Sean, and Santiago, really appreciate you coming here and sharing your experiences with your peers here. Okay, to uh, find out more about Oracle Cloud and uh, Oracle Services, here are some useful links. Obviously, they'll be in the uh, replay as well, um, but you can learn more about the uh, OCI or the Advanced Customer Services by going to these links. Thank you. Okay, um, so if, you, if you, you know, look at what we've discussed here, there are a set of services to really help you uh, thrive in the Oracle Cloud. There's architecture first, transition, managing your workloads, superior support, education and training. And um, you, know, you can rely on either Oracle services to do these things to help you or partners. And in, in many cases, it's, it's a combination of Oracle and partners. So um, just want to make sure that you, know, you understand this, this is really an ecosystem where we're here to help you in any way you move forward with your uh, Oracle Cloud journey. So now uh, we're going to uh, move on and you will hear from one of the Oracle partners on how they are helping uh, you accelerate business value on the Oracle Cloud. Thank you very much. Hello everyone. My name is Arvind Rajan and I am CEO and co-founder of Astute Business Solutions. Astute Business Solutions is a leading Oracle partner helping customers move and improve Oracle application workloads onto Oracle Cloud infrastructure. We specialize in PeopleSoft, EBS, 
and other Oracle application move and improve projects. But we also help non-Oracle application customers, such as Aleutian Banner customers, and some customers running Microsoft SQL Server workloads, migrate those to OCI and successfully operate them. I'm excited to be here today to share some insights on how you can accelerate business value on OCI and gain those benefits that you're going to see in some of our customer case studies today. Now, in recent years, the conversation for cloud has dramatically shifted from why cloud to when and how cloud. Being on cloud is no longer considered to be cutting edge. It is the new normal. In other words, for any modern agile business, cloud is now table stakes. Now, you've heard from Oracle and some customers on the benefits that they receive by moving and improving to OCI. The Oracle cloud value proposition has never been stronger. Let's just do a quick recap. OCI delivers agility, which means you can reduce the time to value for features that enable your business in your mission critical Oracle ERP applications. OCI is secure, it is compliant, it's auditable, and you have complete control over your infrastructure and application workloads when you deploy them on OCI. OCI is efficient, which means as you would come to expect from Oracle Cloud, you should be able to reduce your costs, but at the same time, improve performance. These two don't have to be mutually exclusive. And finally, but most importantly, OCI is a multi-cloud and hybrid solution. We know that your Oracle applications are integrated with on-prem systems and third-party systems, and some of them are cloud systems. Deploying these applications on OCI allows you to seamlessly integrate Oracle application workloads with on-prem and third-party clouds and operate them at the highest efficiency possible. So you heard the value proposition and it's very strong, but we understand that sometimes you may have starting trouble. We also recognize that your teams may be busy managing on-prem applications and keeping the lights on, so much so that realizing the cloud value proposition and benefits may seem like a speck on the distant horizon. However, there's good news. There are many ways to get started with OCI and disaster recovery is one of them. Disaster recovery on Oracle Cloud for your Oracle applications and databases, and even for your non-Oracle workloads, is non-disruptive, quick to implement, economical, and provides high business value. Think of protecting your workloads against ransomware attacks and against natural disasters by having the ability to flip over to Oracle Cloud disaster recovery and continuing to operate your business in the event of such dangers. When it comes to your Oracle applications like PeopleSoft and EVS and JDE, you can either lift and shift them, assuming that you're current and up to date on most of your versions, or you can do a move and improve where you move to the cloud, perform upgrades, update your infrastructure, right size your workloads, all while securing and complying to your business needs. Now, if you're not ready for any reason to move and improve your Oracle applications, then consider taking advantage of Oracle's powerful cloud platform services to extend these applications into the cloud. You can start with autonomous database and data warehouse technologies. You can use chatbots, analytics, integration cloud, IoT, and much more. As they say, there's no substitute for experience, and that's very true on cloud as well. With hundreds of application instances successfully migrated to Oracle Cloud infrastructure, we're in a vantage point where we can use that experience to guide you on your journey to cloud. It all starts with thorough planning. Astute conducts virtual cloud workshops that help you envision your future state, design a solution that is tailored to your needs, while at the same time taking advantage of cloud best practices and validated solution architectures. Moving to the cloud does not have to be a manual process. As a matter of fact, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure provides several automation tools and utilities that can make that transition to cloud very easy. Astute has developed a wide range of automation routines using Ansible, Terraform, Jenkins, and Rackware to further simplify and automate your cloud migration projects. Now we know that these mission critical applications, when they move to cloud, have to be thoroughly tested. 
So we have a robust set of test scripts that validate the before and after states of your applications as we migrate them to cloud so that when you come in to validate them, you have assurances that nothing was left behind, nothing's broken, and it's fully integrated and secure. Over the years, Astute has invested in developing competencies and key areas for Oracle Cloud. The first is move and improve. We also invest in platform services to help you extend the power of your Oracle applications using chatbots, integration cloud services, analytics, disaster recovery, and autonomous database and data warehouse. Our managed services allows you to provide consistent and reliable support services to your business users across the board for any Oracle Cloud infrastructure or platform service. So now let's put all of this in the context of some real world examples to see how the value proposition transfers into tangible customer success. Earlier today, you saw a very powerful video testimonial of CARE a global nonprofit that was started in 1945 as a way for people to provide food supplies and relief packages during World War II, what we commonly refer to as care packages today. In today's world, CARE is a global humanitarian organization operating in 100 countries and serving the needs of the vulnerable and needy of more than 56 million worldwide. Now, CARE decided to move and improve its global PeopleSoft financials and supply chain application to OCI. So that included an upgrade from 9.1 to 9.2, an infrastructure upgrade, a database upgrade, an application and people tools upgrade, and also deploying several new features to enable their global field staff to have access to mobile applications such as expense entry. Now that is a big undertaking by itself, but today, that global application runs on Oracle Cloud infrastructure and works seamlessly across all of these countries for all of their field users. CARE has saved over $250,000 in operational cost savings alone while realizing significant improvements in performance and by taking advantage of tools like Cloud Manager for automated deployment of PeopleSoft instances. Another powerful customer success story that I'd like to share with you today is Gallaudet University. Gallaudet University, based in Washington, DC, was founded in 1864, so a 150-year-old institution that caters to the needs of the deaf and hard of hearing. Gallaudet realized that its on-premise data center was not adequate for supporting its mission-critical application workloads. PeopleSoft Campus Solutions, PeopleSoft Human Capital Management, and people saw financials and supply chain. More importantly, they needed a disaster recovery solution to go with these applications so that they could have business continuity. Gallaudet chose Astute and Oracle Cloud to make that happen. In six months, we were able to migrate and move and improve these applications, upgrade databases, right-size their architecture, and deliver over $600,000 in cost savings each year significant improvement in performance for online and batch transactions, and faster deployment, again, using several automation tools on OCI, such as Database Cloud Service, PeopleSoft Cloud Manager, and others. So you heard the Oracle value proposition, you heard how you could get into cloud, what your potential roadmap would look like, and then you saw some powerful case studies. So what next steps can you take? Are you ready to dip your toes in cloud or take a deep dive? Astute has created a unique offer that we'd like to call the 2020 vision offer for you. And it's quite simple. On the left, you see five programs and you can choose one or more of those. You can choose to move and improve an Oracle application to cloud. You can choose to implement disaster recovery on OCI, analytics on OCI, Illusion Banner on OCI, or Chatbots on OCI. Each of these programs includes a virtual cloud workshop where we will envision your future state and design your solution that is tailored to your needs, secure it, and set up a cloud tenancy on which we can implement that solution. We will migrate that workload to cloud. We will implement cloud best practices so that you're fully integrated and secure. 
and we will train you on OCI so that you have the skill set to grow your cloud presence as your business needs dictate. And we look forward to working with you to get you started on your Oracle Cloud journey and make that a big success. Thank you, and for more information, please visit www.bs2.com, where you'll find information about our services, our customers, our success stories, and several cloud resources that we've developed for you. Stay tuned for our next session, and you are where you'll learn how Oracle has migrated its own industry applications to Oracle Cloud infrastructure. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Mike Prindle, and I'm Vice President of Cloud Architecture and Security in Oracle's Global Business Units, or GBUs for short. Today, I'm going to talk to you briefly about how the Oracle GBUs transform their applications with Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Let's get started. First, some background on the Global Business Units. There are eight GBUs, and each is an individual business inside of Oracle that focuses on a specific vertical market. So there's one GBU dedicated to communications, another to construction and engineering, a third to financial services, food and beverage, hospitality and retail, each have their own GBU, as do health sciences and utilities. Each GBU business combines industry specific expertise with Oracle's extensive technology platform to provide applications that support our customers most critical workloads and most sensitive data. Examples of these workloads include point of sale, clinical trial data management, financial transactions, and workforce management and safety. The GBUs together have a large and diverse SaaS portfolio that serves thousands of customers in all eight of the vertical markets. In the course of doing business for over a decade, the GBUs have collectively done more than 30 acquisitions, including many SaaS properties. To help give you a sense of scale for the GBUs, if we took them as a whole outside of Oracle, that business would look like one of the top 10 independent software vendors in the world. So, so one of the outcomes of the success and growth of the GBUs uh, was that when we acquired a new company, we typically also acquired a new set of data centers. Uh, in fact, the GBUs were so focused on building their SaaS portfolios that we ended up with 80 different data centers uh, that were acquired all over the world. Um, and again, the scale we're talking about is hundreds of thousands of cores of compute, dozens of petabytes of storage, uh, and very complex uh, security and compliance requirements. Um, and then because these data centers were assembled by different companies, each was a unique design. Uh, there were different networks, uh, different compute hardware, different storage, uh, many different vendors uh, were used, and there were many unique IT processes. Um, and so I'm sure you can imagine over time that led to an increase in sort of accumulated technical debt. So it wasn't necessarily a pretty picture. Um, and then on top of this infrastructure, uh, we had acquired dozens of different SaaS applications. And these applications had many different architectures. Uh, they were built on many different technology stacks. Uh, some applications looked more like your traditional single tenant uh, enterprise application. Uh, and some had uh, sort of more cloud native, uh, you know, modern architectures. Uh, so to net it out, we had a, you know, quite a mix of applications running on a set of, you know, very different infrastructures. So our challenge um, was to consolidate, simplify, and streamline uh, this massively diverse set of applications. And, um, and again, these are apps that support our customers' most important workloads, uh, and which uh, and it includes their most important data and which require extremely high levels of security and compliance. It was hard to know where to even start. So how did we start? Um, first, we established a set of principles to help us balance the desired business objectives against constraints such as time and limited resources. I thought I'd share some of those principles with you today. Our first and most important principle was to make sure that we provide a business continuity for our existing customers. Our customers had to come first and we couldn't break our existing business. But on the flip side of that, we believe that our journey needed to start by moving to OCI as quickly as we possibly could. Um, we felt the transformation um, that we were attempting to do at our scale required the most modern and, and secure IaaS platform possible. Um, we also wanted to consume OCI just like any other external IaaS customer. 
Um, and the, the reason for that was we wanted to take advantage of, sort of the massive investment that, that Oracle was making um, within OCI. Uh, we also believe that we benefit from this investment well beyond the, the initial move phase. So we're setting ourselves up for success down the road. Um, we also felt strongly that moving to new IaaS platform was an opportunity to right some of the wrongs of the past. Um, so removing the technical debt that I mentioned uh, was a very important goal for us. Um, but we also wanted to make sure that we found that sweet spot between speed and perfection. Uh, in almost all cases, we use the move as an opportunity to set us up to incrementally pay back that technical debt over a fixed period of time that was manageable. Um, you know, next, you know, modern cloud architecture patterns are all about giving the customer a better experience. Um, so the minimum bar for us was to treat the infrastructure as code, regardless of how modern, or in many cases, not modern, um, our applications were. Moving to OCI made this easy. And, and finally, security compliance was key for our customers. So we wanted to build on top of the strong security foundation that OCI provides. So with this set of principles, we formulated our plan um, and we wanted to understand what the likely uh, business outcomes would be. And so where we landed, um, you know, based on those principles and, and um, uh, you know, uh, our, our business requirements, uh, we ended up with a pattern that looked uh, primarily like move and improve. Uh, and what we found was that with a move and improve pattern, um, we could move our applications to the OCI platform quickly um, with a small um, and contained set of changes. So it, wasn't, it wasn't a pure lift. Uh, we were gonna make some improvements, but kind of just enough. Um, and uh, we found this approach would allow us to get to OCI quickly while minimizing the upfront investment. Um, we decided that changes during the move, move phase um, had to be highly leverageable and enable us to rapidly improve our apps once we, we got to OCI. So, so there had to be a pretty significant payback um, for that initial investment that we were gonna make uh, in, in the move phase. Um, so after going through all the details, the move and improve plan seemed to check the boxes. So we started to work uh, on, or we started to work uh, to figure out how we uh, got our move going. The work we did to prepare for our move phase was pretty straightforward. Um, first, we decided to use the infrastructure's code capabilities that I mentioned uh, to assure consistency across data centers uh, and also to allow us to, to easily make changes uh, in the future that we could uh, you know, test and, and easily deploy. Uh, and then next, um, you know, we, we decided to standardize our technology stack to minimize the variation and reduce the number of third-party vendors. So in addition to just using OCI uh, compute and storage, uh, we made sure that we moved to the most current versions of Oracle Linux. Uh, we used uh, OCI's load balancer as a service. Uh, we used uh, the Oracle database as a service. And we used other past services that were delivered from OCI, uh, such as identity and access management. Um, and what we found was that in addition to the operational benefits of eliminating the complexity and variation, there are also some interesting financial outcomes that this initial move phase would unlock for us. Um, one of these was that we were able to significantly reduce our plan cap, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, our plan cap expend by 80% by evacuating many of the legacy data centers quickly. We avoided having to replace aging hardware. We didn't have to replace network cores or refresh storage devices or compute resources that were falling out of support. The second benefit we realized was that we were able to reduce our third party license expense by over 40% and use fewer vendors overall. Again, these, expenses, these were expenses that we could drastically reduce just during our initial move phase. Uh, and then lastly, I want to point out one other uh, key advantage uh, that got unlocked for us when we uh, did that initial move to OCI. Um, we have a, a set of uh, existing applications in retail and hospitality that require PCI DSS certification. Um, and we were initially concerned about the time and expense uh, that we might incur to recertify these apps once we move them to OCI. But what we found was that we were able to quickly receive PCI DSS certification by a third party uh, qualified security assessor as part of our move to OCI. Essentially the security and compliance capabilities and attestations that we needed from OCI were already there and ready for us to build on. So for the Oracle Global Business Units, the benefits of simply moving to OCI were fairly dramatic. It simplified our data center operations. It improved our overall security posture. Our systems performed better 
and were more available. And finally, the move not only reduced our IaaS cost by more than 60%, but provided us with a world-class IaaS platform on which we could continue to improve our applications to, pro to provide better value to our customers. We've since moved on to the improved phase of our journey, which includes moving to Oracle's autonomous database. Uh, so to recap, in our, in our move journey, um, consuming OCI's Gen 2 cloud, just like an external customer, allowed us to achieve real business outcomes in a short period of time while minimizing the upfront investment. Based on our experience, I believe that moving, OCI app, or sorry, moving Oracle applications to OCI is the fastest way for you to execute your own move and improve journey to the cloud. Well, that's it for me. Thanks for taking the time to hear about how Oracle transformed its industry applications with the Oracle Gen 2 Cloud. Stay tuned for the next segment where you can hear how you can get started today. Thanks. Uh, so back to, uh, I would like to thank everybody uh, for presenting today. So in summary, you hopefully you heard from a number of our customers about their specific journeys of moving applications to Oracle Cloud. Uh, as you can see, Oracle provides a lot of tools uh, for that journey, along with the expertise to help you on your, on your path. Our customers share their challenges and their uh, successes with you as well. We have a partner, Stu, thanks to them uh, for highlighting how they're supporting uh, our customers, our joint customers on this journey towards moving to the cloud. And you also hopefully learned a little bit about how Oracle itself migrated or moved our applications from our on-premises environment to Oracle Cloud infrastructure. Once again, uh, all of the stuff in terms of technology is available to you to try for free on Oracle Cloud infrastructure. Simply go to oracle.com slash cloud to sign up for a free trial. You can also learn about you know, Oracle Cloud or advanced customer services uh, with Oracle in terms of if you're interested in migrating your applications and partnering with Oracle to move to Oracle Cloud infrastructure, please go to oracle.com slash cloud to learn more. I want to also thank our partner uh, for providing their experience, expertise and experience. Uh, you can actually look avail their offer for 2020 vision offer for Oracle Cloud by going to Astute's website. In addition to all of this, you can also get additional resources uh, at our resource center. So the resource center can be uh, accessed via the following link that's listed on the slide. Over there, you will see a number of resources from essentials guides to you know, uh, migration offers to uh, solution pages and so on and so forth. A lot of valuable resources, good information for you to learn about how do you migrate your application to Oracle Cloud infrastructure. We also have a series, every month we try to do a new uh, virtual event series. Uh, so today's is part of that overall series. The next one is scheduled for October 14th. It's on analytics. I would highly encourage you to sign up for it or register for it in advance if, you're, if that's a topic that really interests you. Once again, I'd like to thank all our presenters today and thank you so much for attending. 